Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and it's full review time. It's been a long time coming on this knife. This is my Skiff Drifter. Skiff Made Blades is the maker of this knife. I picked this up at the USN show in Las Vegas, and it was a while back now. I've taken forever to get to this review. Um, but yeah, I've had this knife for months and months now, and it is awesome. It is an exceptional just gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful, <laughs> incredibly machined work of art at the end of the day. Um, Skiff, many people may be familiar with because they also make bearings that they sell as a la carte items. A lot of people swap Skiff bearings into their existing knives. Um, I think some makers even purchase bearings from Skiff to use in their original builds. I may be mistaken on that, but um, I've put Skiff bearings in a number of my own knives. Um, a lot of like React built knives that already have a really great action. Tossing some skiffs in can enhance it even a little bit further. So I really like skiff. I have for a long time. I had handled a couple of their knives. Um, I had handled, I think, the Accomplice first. And then as soon as I started seeing the Drifter, it just stuck out to me as a knife that I would love to own. This knife is so many things that I like. Now, this review comes at a time where, I don't know if I'll be able to go through it, but I'm considering letting this knife go. If I do, it'll be for a very particular move. Um, I'm up to three Koenig Ariases. I'll do an Arius update video soon. But I have that Holman Hadfield knife case. That's a knife display case. And in the top of it, there's a plexiglass compartment. I've done a video on the channel. And... Under that plexiglass, it's four slots to display knives, and you put the plexiglass back, out, back over them. And I would kind of like to have a fourth areas, a particular one. Um, and so this may be my way to do that. I don't have the money right now to just buy another areas. They are not ex or they're not cheap, and uh, the one I want in particular is not cheap. So this may be my way to get there but i love this knife so much that i don't know if i'll be able to make myself do it um especially i picked this knife at their table at usn show i was particular about what i wanted and this was like exactly what i wanted in a drifter the milling pattern the color um it's really really nice so let's talk about the materials on it real quick and then we'll get to the full review newsflash it's going to be very positive i love this knife um and then, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens in the coming days and weeks, whether I'm able to make myself part with it or if I'll look through my collection and find another way to make that areas happen. Anyway, so materials-wise, blade steel on this guy is CPM 154. Um, we'll talk about that, but <laughs> that's what we're working with. Um, everything else on this knife, I believe, is titanium. I guess except for the one exception would be the stainless lock insert. But our hardware is titanium. Our pivot collars, as you can see with that anodizing, they are titanium. Pocket clip is titanium. Backspacer, titanium. So titanium frame lock with all titanium bits and then a CPM 154 blade. Um, yeah, let's just start with ergos. I should say as well, if you're wondering what number drifter this is for some reason, it's marked internally. This one is drifter number 182. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it's right there inside the scales. Um, other than that, internally, you've just got the skiff logo on the opposite side. So, okay, ergonomically, um, this knife in the ergos department is so money for me. There's no jimping anywhere on this knife. I don't like jimping. I prefer knives without, so I love that. This handle milling pattern gives me a good amount of traction without being aggressive at all. Um, the Just the profile for my hand, it just fits incredibly well in a saber grip. I wear medium gloves, but I fill them out real well, and this knife just fits my hand. Um, I don't have a bunch of knife sticking out beyond my pinky. I'm landing comfortably on it in a saber grip and a hammer grip. You also have this defined forward choil which is somehow even better <laughs> when you're not using the choil and it's just money. Hammer grip, saber, or sorry, hammer grip, saber grip, um, with or without the choil, both exceptional. Draw cut, even that is really comfortable for my hand. Um, reverse grip, super comfortable. Reverse grip draw cut, that works. It's not amazing, but it works. Um, so yeah, every grip 
orientation that I put this knife in, especially the ones that I use the most, it's wonderful for my hand. Truly just excellent. Um, so yeah, ergonomically, it's like full marks. <laughs> I really, really love it. Uh, let's talk action next, because this is an interesting part of this knife. So a lot of the times that I've put skiff bearings in a knife, that it becomes more drop shutty, right? And so I think I, along with quite a few other people, assume that the skiff made knives are going to be really drop shutty, and they're not super drop shutty. It's not like today I'm carrying my Holt haptic. The haptic, if I get my thumb out of the way, it just drops all the way down, right? That's drop shutty. The drifter, it requires a little bit of coaxing. It's still pretty droppy, all things considered. And as it's broken in, the longer I've had it, the more I've carried it and played with it a lot, it's gotten smoother over time. But it's not free falling like the haptic is. So I just think that's an interesting kind of like dichotomy where in my mind, skiff bearings make knives drop shutty, but they're obviously using the bearings they make and the knife they make, and it's not drop shutty. They tune it to be a different way than that. So on the same hand, even though it's not drop shutty, this knife has one of my favorite actions on deployment ever. Like if the haptic is, it's phenomenal, both on deployment and on closure, but like the real star of the show on the haptic, in my opinion, is how droppy it is. The snappiness of the drifter with this prominent flipper tab and a pretty aggressively stiff detent, it snaps in like its own special kind of way. It's just on deployment, super satisfying for me. I really, really like it. I'm not usually that drawn to flipper tab only knives. I prefer knives that I can middle finger flick. Um, I like multiple deployment methods when possible, but as a flipper only knife goes, this is just, it's wonderful. It's a really, really precise feeling, just phenomenal deployment. And on closure, it's not like it's a slouch, right? It's really, really quite nice to close. It almost feels like some of the best knives I've ever experienced on washers, if that makes sense. Like really, really well done, tight tolerance washer knives, not talking about the Sabenza, but some knives on washers can still be pretty droppy and really like poppy on deployment. This feels like that because it feels tighter than a bearing knife in a lot of ways. It feels more controlled like somehow or like sometimes washers do, but it's like it's riding this line of somehow using these bearings in a way that feels ultra tight and controlled. And yeah, it's, it's really, really good. Um, so yeah, action is great. As flipper only knives go, it's one of my favorites ever. I just really, really like it. Um, let's talk carry. So carrying this knife, you obviously have that big flipper tab there. So if that's something that bothers you, be aware of that. It's quite a, quite a big flipper tab. But other than that, the knife isn't crazy wide this way. It's actually fairly thin this way. It's a, on the thinner end of the spectrum for a frame lock. I love the thinness of it in pocket. The clip is really long. I thought that was going to bother me. Turns out it hasn't at all. A lot of clips would end like here, right? But this one just really extends far down the knife. And I think aesthetically it actually looks really cool because they've machined it so well. But anyway, long clip, not deep carry. Got a, a flipper tab sticking out. Um, internally, there is not milling on here. <laughs> so it's not a super lightweight knife. But something about the way this knife all comes together, the weight hasn't bothered me one bit. It almost feels like, I don't know, like the way the sensation of this knife when held in hand and when you're playing with it, fidgeting with it, I wouldn't go and add internal milling now, or at least I'd be hesitant to do so. Like if on the next drifter that they make at Skiff, they were like, now we do internal milling. I'd be really curious. I might like it better, but I'm worried that I wouldn't because it just feels like this weight kind of belongs here in a way that's atypical for me to even feel about a knife. I generally prefer lightweight. Anyway, in pocket, that weight somehow feels distributed pretty well. Maybe it's the thinness that it's not such a thick profile in pocket. 
stays pretty trim. Um, the pocket clip, even though it's not deep carry, it's a gorgeous bit of knife to have sticking out of your pocket. It's kind of a flex in and of itself. Plus the clip is now sticking out of your pocket, obviously when it's in pocket and it's the clip looks gorgeous. It's like, this is a dressy, gentlemanly knife in my opinion. And so the fact that it's not ultra deep carry, I think kind of works for it. Um, but yeah, it's comfortable in pocket. It's not amazing. It's not lightweight. It's not the thinnest thing ever. It's got a big flipper tab on it, but everything is smooth. Everything feels pretty trim and it's, it's dialed well for carry considering those things I just said. Um, so we've talked ergos, action, and carry. Let's talk cutting real quick. So this blade um, is CPM 154. I don't love that. CPM 154 does not get me excited, especially on a knife that costs about a grand at table, right? Like <laughs> I just, I, that's one of those things that bugs me in the kind of like custom end of the market that CPM 154 still gets used so much. I get that makers like it. I get that it takes this gorgeous hand rub and it's got mirrored um, spine and the flipper tab edges are mirrored. Like everything is gorgeous about the way they've finished this knife. Even look at the way they laser skiff in there. It's stunning to look at. Sorry, quick sidebar. So anyway, it's stunning to look at the way that this is finished. Like I, I, I understand the maker arguments for using CPM 154, but I also don't love it. <laughs> it's not a steel that gets me excited. Now what they are doing at Skiff in particular that I think is really cool is when they use Damascus, I'm usually not a Damascus fan at all. I just don't prefer it. Um, I get that it looks really cool a lot of the time, but I'm more of a function over form guy. If I can have both, cool, but I'll take function over form. Anyway, when they use Damascus at Skiff, they're using something called Damacore, and that is Vanix, super clean at the core, which is really cool. So the steel that's actually determining your cutting edge and your blade's performance is Vanix, and I really like Vanix. I've had Vanix now on my Quiet Carry folders, on my Steingraber Performance Knives Shark. I've used the steel pretty extensively and had all great experiences with it. It will never rust. It is virtually completely rust proof and it has pretty good edge retention. It's a great steel. So the fact that when you get the dressed up like Damascus versions of their knives, that's what they're putting in them now is really cool to see. I like that quite a bit. Um, I just wish that like their baseline steel instead of CPM 154 was 20CV or 10V, something like, I don't know, something more in the arena that I, I just prefer. CPM 154, to me, if I were to rank steels off the top of my head and put them into tiers, CPM 154 might not even be one down from the top, it might be two down. Like, it's just not amazing. And this knife feels to me like it deserves a steel that is as amazing as the rest of the build is and CPM 154 just doesn't get me there. That said, I have quite a few customs at this point and I there's even more that I've had and now sold, but lately I've gone through quite a few customs and a lot of them have CPM 154. It's like in that realm, it's a very highly used steel. I would just like to see that start to shift and I say that every time it comes up, but I would like to see new things start to get used instead of CPM 154. Uh, MagnaCut is super easy to work with by all accounts and MagnaCut is great. I have MagnaCut now on a couple of folders and on a fixed blade and it is awesome in my experience so far and it's wonderful to finish and it, it could hopefully be the next steel that we see a lot in this range because CPM 154 just doesn't, I don't know, some people love it, more power to you if you do, but I don't, I don't hate it, but it doesn't excite me one bit. So anyway, aside from the steel choice, this blade is stunning, not only to look at, but functionally. To be fair, I have not used this knife super hard because the hand rub on it is gorgeous. The mirrored flats are gorgeous. The swedge is also hand rubbed and it's gorgeous. But you've got this really nice grind that comes down, gets nice and thin behind the edge. We've got a blade shape that I find super useful on an EDC type of knife where you've got the tip down here. So going into like packaging and things like that, you're just 
right there, this sheep's foot or worn cliff, whatever you want to call it, makes stuff like that super easy to drag through the top of material. Um, and it's just, it's very useful. It's thin, it's ground well, and the shape works. The edge that they put on it is one of the best edges I've had on a new knife ever. <laughs> it's really, really good. Um, and yeah, I haven't used it a ton, but I've used it for light duty things. And I usually carry this knife, honestly, when I'm like, it's been kind of a gentleman's knife for me. If I'm in slacks or if I'm going somewhere nice or it's an occasion, it's date night, something like that. This will be the type of knife I put in my pocket. So I'm not doing a lot of the hardcore cutting tasks in those environments. But when I've opened mail and opened packages and stuff with it, it's been wonderful. I've test cut through paper. It does exceptionally well. Um, I haven't put it through any zip ties. I don't think I've even cut an apple with it. I imagine it would probably do well, but it's just too pretty of a knife to do that type of stuff with. And usually I don't keep knives that are so pretty that I don't want to use them hard. But this one, I don't know. I just, I click with it. Um, Anyway, so the cutting performance is good. One of the things that I'll say I wasn't quite expecting about this knife is because of how beautifully finished it is everywhere, it's such a fingerprint magnet that sometimes I hesitate to carry it um, only because... <laughs> Sorry, my wife just got home from the gym and she turned music on. So anyway, um, the fingerprint magnetism <laughs> that exists within this knife just makes me like I, I, I'm really deliberate about when I carry it and it's not just because it's so pretty but it's also because I know that every time I pull it out even if it's just to show people because I like to show my knives to people most people around me know I'm a knife guy this is the type of knife I'm gonna want to show to somebody right but even if I show it to somebody and I hand it to them and they handle it and I'm showing them how it works and all of that that goes along with it. I know I'm gonna need to pull out my hank with microfiber and I'm gonna have to spend a minute cleaning it because it just, it's so beautifully finished that every time you touch it, you can tell that it's been touched. And so, things like that. The blade finishing making me hesitant to cut with it. The finish on everything that makes me hesitant to like Hand, not hesitant to handle it, but just makes me, I know that I'm going to need to clean it every time I do. And that's a hurdle with a knife, right? Compared to a knife that is just like a user that I, I have knives that I carry all the time and I never even wipe them down. I don't worry about it because part of their charm is that I, I use them hard. If I'm carrying my River's Edge Cutlery PM2, every once in a while I've wiped down this blade, but a lot of the time, I don't wipe it down at all and the finish you can see spots where I've used it and I've cut into things and it doesn't bug me because this knife isn't like a showpiece and this knife is in its own way kind of a showpiece type knife and so it's just a different type of knife ownership when it's that caliber and when you have to be kind of more delicate around it now you could make the argument sure that I could just suck it up and start treating this knife like a user and I've got a buddy, Nick Rogers from Niche Designs. He EDC'd, uh, I think it was a skiff accomplice. Is either the culprit or the accomplice for like over a year. It was the knife he carried every day and cut everything with. He had one of the Damascus versions. I think it was before they were using Damacor though. Um, but yeah, he was constantly using and carrying that knife and he treated it like a user. It was even nicer spec than this because it was Damascus. It had Timascus all over it. It's a gorgeous knife. And so... Yes, I could, in theory, just decide to treat this knife like that, but I don't want to. I have other knives that feel like better users to me, and it's just so pretty I would hate to <laughs> kind of ruin it. So that's where the dichotomy lies, right? Because it's like this would make an easy knife to sell and then have everything I need to get the exact Arius that I want, and the Arius is one of those knives for me that some people might not be comfortable carrying and using, but each of my areas is I carry and use all the time, and I love carrying and using them, and I don't know, yeah, it's <laughs> it's this weird line that I'm battling with internally right now because I love this knife so much, and it's so perfect in a way that other knives aren't. Like, the mastery that they show 
in their machining and finishing here on this knife is just incredible. And this is about as basic as these knives really get. This is pretty plain Jane for a skiff. And it's stunning, absolutely gorgeous. And it's, not only does it look good, but it functions so well. It's like, there are knives that are really, really pretty, but then I get them in hand and I'm like, oh, the ergos don't work for me. The grind is thick, that like, I can tell that it's a knife that isn't really designed to be used. And this has all of the elements of a really good user. It's just like too pretty for me to use. So this happens now and again on the channel. I'll get something that's really exciting and it's just too pretty for me. And then I, I struggle with it because I want the really cool, pretty knives, but I, I hate myself when I keep seeing them in the case and I'm not carrying them. And then when I do, I'm too afraid to use them. So I've got a secondary on me that I'm using for all of my cutting tasks. Meanwhile, this primary is phenomenal. So yeah, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at at the moment. <laughs> but um, I guess that'll be it on my full review. This knife has incredible action, wonderful ergos. It carries well. Um, it looks absolutely wonderful. It cuts well. It's like, it's great. And it's American made by a really cool family owned, like small operation. They're in New York. They're great people. I met them at USN. It was the father and the son who were kind of the guys doing the making. And the mom was there. I got to, she was the one who handled the financial transaction. She was a sweetheart. They're just like, they're great people. And I like the knife so much. I love the knife. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do with it. It's kind of where I'm ending up here. And I've been in this same internal struggle now for a while. Um, yeah, anyway, if you want to see more of this particular knife, I did also recently send this to Lefty EDC. He's got some videos on his channel. And uh, yeah, so you can see more of his take on it there. I don't think he loved it as much as I adore it. Um, I do also, I'll try to, if I do sell this before I do, do a head to head with it and the haptic because a lot of people wonder which I prefer. They're knives that seem to occupy a pretty freaking similar space, but they're also pretty different in their own number of ways. Um, this is my second haptic. Anyway, we'll see. I'll try to do that if I can. If not, short answer, um, the haptic is the knife that makes it in my pocket and I actually carry and cut things with and it for some reason just doesn't have quite the level of like maybe fingerprint <laughs> stickiness that this does and it, it's easier for me to stomach carrying and using this knife. Um, but this knife feels more expensive, which is part of why I don't carry it and use it. It feels nicer. It feels dressier. Um, the like little bit heavier that it is, it feels... I don't know. It feels like more than the haptic does, even though they both cost in the same ballpark as one another. They're just, they're pretty different knives. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. This has been my full review of the Skiff Made Blades Drifter. And uh, man, is it an exceptional, exceptional knife. So thanks for checking it out. See you on the next one.